Hey everybody, uh, I was just getting ready to do some help with the electric field problems and I was just thinking about, we should do a quick little rundown um, about how similar they are, electric fields are, to a gravity field. So, you know, thinking about the round robin or any type of static force phenomena you've seen where, where say, balloons are attracted, it's pretty neat. I mean, there's there's an invisible force there, and, and we've studied invisible forces. We've, we've studied field forces. Uh, we've studied gravity. So let me do a quick little comparison, then I'll do a rundown of a problem or two. Um, so we've already talked about gravity. So here we have a very large mass, maybe like the Earth, and we had a smaller mass, and there was an attraction between these two masses. Uh, we had a formula, and we said force of gravity was a constant, G, mass times mass over distance squared. Hmm, inverse square law. Interesting. Um, an electric field, E field, you know, you'd have, say, a negatively charged object. What does that mean real quick? It means that this object has more electrons than it really needs to have. So it has more electrons than protons. So overall, it has a negative charge. Um, if you had a positively charged object, it would feel an attractive force. There would be an attractive force between these two objects. Um, it looks real similar to this formula. It's force electrostatic. Is K a different constant times Q. Q, those are the, the charges. So just like the two masses, it's the two charges, a different constant over distance squared, inverse square law, pretty neat. Um, so this is regarding the forces. So we called this Coulomb's law, that was my last video. Uh, let me just show you how it also connects. We also, when we're doing gravity, we did force of weight. We said force of weight is a mass times the, really the little g, which is the gravity field. So it's really how strong, so if we just solve this for g, we would say G is force on a mass. So like a gravity field strength is how strong is a force, a weight. Like what is the weight of a mass in that gravity field? Real similar with the electric field. So an electric field strength is a force on a charge. So it's, it's how strong is the force on a given charge. And that describes Newton's per coulomb of how strong that field is. It's it's a real similar to gravity. We we did what's the for, what's the weight of a mass? You know, if we're on the moon where a gravity field is less, there's less force on a mass. So there's there's less gravity. That's just describing the gravity field. So E field is really just doing the same thing. Um, there was a second equation. There was a second equation in the notes there. So let me just erase this stuff. Um, so let me just show you where that comes from, and it's real similar to a, a formula we didn't really focus on too much, but it's another way to write what little g equals. So what we did is we said force of weight was equal to the force of gravity. Force of weight is force of gravity. So we said uh, g m m over d squared is mass times gravity. You cancel out the small mass, and now you have a new equation for little g, a constant the big mass, like the planet, over d squared. So for electric fields, what you do is you set the kqq over d squared. The Coulomb's law is equal to a, what is it, a uh, mass times gravity. It's equal to, uh, oh, it's equal to the charge, uh, the field times the charge. So just like weight is mg, or a G field is a force per mass. An electric field is a force, can you see this? Okay, force per charge. Um, so you're setting the force of electrostatic equal to cross multiply EQ. So the force, the same as the electrostatic force. So if you cancel out the small charge, you know, the test charge, the formula is just, the electric field is the constant times the big charge, you know, the, the large object, just like the big mass, divided by d squared. Anyway, that's where that one comes from. Um, to take a look at some of the sample problems. Um, let me take you through one or two of them and give the rest a shot. Remember, we're looking for your best fair effort on these kind of problems. Um, 
So just show completion and a fair effort, and you'll get full credit on homework type stuff. Uh, first problem there, electric field practice. It's, it's just straightforward. Uh, so we'll do a straightforward one, and then we'll do one of those multiple proton kind of ones. Uh, so the first one just says, let's see here, number one. It says a positive test charge, and it's measured in coulombs. I guess real quick, to have a chat on how something gets a charge numerically, a, a quantitative charge. Um, a charge is always some number of electrons. This formula is usually written as Q equals NE, and it's really the number of electrons. So, it's, so and what's an electron? Well, we figured out from the Millikan oil drop lab, which I got to do in college, which was really cool. You would bounce an oil drop in an electric field, and based on the weight of the droplet, if you're balancing it, you know the force is equal upward, and you'd be able to do a bunch of math and figure out what was the charge on that oil droplet. It turns out all the charges that we've ever figured out, or Millikan figured out, and we've done since then, are always based off some number of one same, always some number, and we, we call that the fundamental charge. So anyway, a Q is always made up of some number. And what is this number? It is plus minus uh, 1.6 times 10. Oh, my God. Am I going to get it wrong on the spot here? Uh, where is it? Negative 19. Negative 19 coulombs. Uh, what is the plus minus about? If you have extra electrons, meaning you have more electrons than you should from some sort of friction, uh, then we'd use the negative. We just say you have some multiple of the negative. If something's positive, it's because it's missing electrons. So you would just, same thing. You just use the positive value to say it has a positive charge then. Um, so onward to number one, sorry. Positive test charge. So it just says, so positive test charge. So Q equals five times 10 to the negative fourth coulombs. Uh, is in an electric field, and it gives it a force of 2.5 times 10 to the negative 4. So a force, 2.5 times 10 to the negative 4 newtons. And it wants to know what is the magnitude of electric field. So it wants to know E. So this is as straightforward as it gets. It just really saying is an E field is the force on a charge. It's just the formula. So you just say you're just taking that 2.5 times 10 to the negative 4. And dividing by 5 times 10 to the negative 4, and this is half that, we're 0.5 newtons per coulomb, number one. Uh, I think two and three are, are pretty similar. Yeah, so let me jump down to number four. Okay, number four. Number four is two parts. Uh, it talks about a lead nucleus as a charge of 82 protons. Uh, part A is looking for the force on an electron at some distance from the nucleus. So the attractive force of the electron to the nucleus, the positive nucleus. Uh, and then in B, it wants to know what is the direction of the electric field. So how strong is the electric field, the E field? So part A wants to find use Coulomb's law to find the force, kqq over d squared. And then once you have that force, you could do force per charge or use the other equation. Let me show you. So, so we've got this lead nucleus. It's protons and neutrons. It's overall positive. And they're talking about this electron with an attractive force towards the center, a negative electron, of course. Um, so A, part A, wants to know what is the force, what is the magnitude and direction of the force of the electron, on the electron. So first of all, we need to figure out what are the two objects. So we have this lead nucleus, which is made up of 82 protons, and we have an electron. So we can figure out the charge of both of these objects because we need Coulomb's law. Fe is K constant, K, Q, Q over D squared. So in order to use this, we need to know these two charges. We know the charge of electron. It is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 Coulombs. That is a negative. And then the 82 protons, we can figure out using that formula I mentioned before. Q equals an E, some number of fundamental charges. So if it is 82, so we'd say 82 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs for every fundamental charge. So 82 of them is 82 times that number. Uh, let's figure that number out. I think I have it here somewhere. Yeah, 1.31 times 10 to the negative 17 coulombs. So here's Q1 and Q2. 
Uh, so let's plug it in there. So we've got we've got our constant nine times ten to the ninth. We've got each charge. Hmm, running out of room here already. Let me just move all this over. We've got nine times ten to the ninth. We've got each charge. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19, and 1.31 times 10 to the negative 17. We see all that? Yep. And then d squared, it tells us in the problem how far away it is. 1 times 10 to the, what is it? 1 times 10 to the negative 10. Don't forget to square that. Um, you might notice I also did not put in the negative here for the type of charge on the electron. Um, when I use Coulomb's law, I don't put in that leading positive and negative. I first look at that positive and negative and determine is it going to be attraction or repulsion. So this is definitely going to be an attraction. Um, so I just want to use Coulomb's law generally to figure out what is the magnitude or the amount of that, that force. Um, you do need your exponent if it's negative. You do need that because that's the actual number. Um, but the leading positive and negative just tells you if it's a positive or negative charge, and that just tells you like charges, positives, negatives, repel, and opposite charges attract. These are opposites. It will be an attraction. So you solve this out. You should get the force electrostatic, and it is 1.89 times 10 to the negative 6. That's going to be in newtons. For part B, they want to know the electric field strength. So you could just do force on a charge, since we know the force on the smaller charge. The force on the smaller charge is the electron's charge. So the force upon the electron, we do know the force now. So you could just do force divided by that charge. Whoa. That is, wow. The rotation of the Earth, sweetie. <laughs> has caused the most bizarre interaction going on with the light coming through the window, and my entire screen looks ridiculous. We'll have to wait till we get the light to talk about that. <laughs> All right, that was pretty cool. All right, sorry about that. Okay, interesting. Uh, anyway, sorry, that was pretty crazy. So sorry if you didn't see all that. We are at finding the force between the electron and the nucleus. Uh, we figured out the force. Now we're trying to do part B. We're trying to find the force upon that charge. You could either do it this way or you could uh, you could do it the other way. What is it? It is KQ over K Q over D squared, which I showed you how we find that um, earlier. Um, so you just put in that force per charge. So grab this force and put in 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs, the charge of an electron, and you should get a 1.18 times 10 to the 13th newtons per coulomb. And the direction of this field is away from the... You know, the direction is always the direction a positive particle would go. So the field around the proton there, the protons, the nucleus, is away. So if I was to draw the electric field, I would draw it this way. Anyway, number four. Give that a shot. Let me know if you got any problems. Later.